we have ways of making you laugh, get rid of the ways of making you grin. Grinning is good for the indigestion, open your mouth, it clears congestion. Frowning is good for the pessimistic, sniggers are good for riffraff. So don't try to fight it, we know that you like it, we have ways of making you laugh. Good evening, world. And Thank you. Thank you. Theatre. Great Professor Higgins is of our time. Now then, don't be shy, you young cockney ragamuffin. You're to come home with me for six months and I will teach you to speak properly. At the end of which time, I shall take you to Lady Windermere's ball and pass you off as a duchess. Now, what do you say to that? I say you're bleeding mad! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Professor Eric Idle and Eliza Vosburgh. And welcome to the last program in the present series. The World of Poetry. Some readings from our cultural heritage. Oh, what a funny thing is the flea. You can't tell the he from the she. But he can and she can. Whoopee! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I found a starving pigeon once. I never shall forget it. I took it home and gave it food and water. Then I ate it. <laughs> Adam and Eve in the garden dwelt. They were so happy and jolly. I wonder how they would have felt if all the leaves were holly. <laughs> they built the chapel at land office over the railway booking office. And Jones, the village pastor, is also station master. Now Jones is known throughout the nation for marrying above his station. They call it legal tender, that green and crackling stuff. It's tender when you have it, but when you don't, it's tough. Oh, oh God, yeah. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner. B O. <laughs> My dog's called Grieg, the old man said. I think it's rather neat. Why the hell do you call him Grieg? I saw him peer against sweet. Bill Oddy was feeling so shoddy, with pains at the base of his body, that a surgeon named Grant did a bottom transplant. But the bottom rejected Bill Oddy. <laughs> there was a young lady named Caroline Kars, who walked in the ocean right up to her ankle. That doesn't rhyme! Well, wait till the time comes in, Buster. <laughs> there was a young lady named Etta, who fancied herself in a sweater. Three reasons she had to keep warm wasn't bad, but the other two reasons were better. <laughs> there once was a young man named Treat, who minced as he walked down the street. He wore shoes of bright red and playfully said, I may not be strong, but I'm sweet. You have heard of the knock-kneed Sam Guzman and Samantha, his bow-legged cousin. There are some people say that love finds a way. For the Sam and Samantha, it doesn't. Every time Lady Lowbody swoons, her bosoms pop out like balloons. <laughs> but her butler stands by with a glint in his eye and lifts them back in with warm spoons. <laughs> While grasping this girl on the ground, I looked up and suddenly found that the old BBC from the top of a tree were filming for town and around. <laughs> In visiting Fong's Chinese restaurant, David Jason sees his managing director. He goes over and joins him in order to ingratiate himself and look what funny things ensue. Hello, sir. Can, can I join you, sir? Well, would. I, 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 work in, I work in your firm, sir. Ah. The, the tea boy. Ah, oh, good evening. Well, Could I have a, the, the number one order, please, for one, with, with the chopsticks? Uh, you're um, having um, chopsticks. Ah, ah. When, in, when in Rome. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, oh, very, very good. The um, the um, food. Um, chop. Uh, ah. mm. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Ha, ha, ha. 
cut it. Uh, you've got in the, uh, yeah. Hmm. Very good. You know, you know, there was a, a Chinese restaurant once in, in, it was in a, a little, do you know it, with a, with a big, on the, uh, thing, you know. You know, I must learn to use chopsticks. I'm such a messy eater with a spoon. No way, I do not. So now on Sundays, when it's dry, the people stop and stare as I am taking my oyster for walking. Oh, we are really incredibly sweet. Oh, we walk very slow, because as you know, an oyster has very few feet. If any, I'm taking my oyster for walking. And my oyster is taking for me. La da 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 I admit I've had affairs with other mollusks. Well, mussels have a certain sex appeal. And I well recall the twinkle when I first saw a winkle. Is that what you call it, too? And surely nothing can conceal the candor, the candor of a jelly deal. Well, all right, I caused a scandal with a scallop. But I'm really not so shellfish anymore. Because a lovable crustacean has expended my frustration. You can stuff your cockles, because instead, I am happy in my oyster bag. I'm taking 
Welcome, welcome to chapter two, in which Kingsley Verity takes a villa in Ibiza for eight months to finish his novel. He's rather a slow reader. In which, in which young Professor Nutley crosses a cucumber with a Yorkshire pudding and gets Wilfred Pickles. <laughs> in which Wolfgang composes his polytonal vocal variations for Count of Tenor and Mezzo Soprano based on Claudio Monteverdi's variations on Schoenberg's atonal etude in D-sharp major and it gets broadcast in Sing Something Simple. <laughs> but first, some gems from our post bag. Mr. Mr. Peter Sutton of Wall's End, Northumberland, uh, sent us this advertisement which appeared in Autosport. 1934 Rolls-Royce hearse with one bench seat. Body needs attention. <laughs> That's a bit of a crab, isn't it? It's a case of let us respray. Over to you, Barry Cryer. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Miss Ruth Katz of Westcliff-on-Sea has sent us what must be the week's best offer. Free two-bath sachet with woman. <laughs> David Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thomas Card, you of Brighton, saw this in the September the 23rd edition of the Daily Mail. Mr. Wonsey, 57, fought the blaze in his pyjamas until the fire brigade arrived. <laughs> Uh, he must have been put out. Bill Oddie. Thank you, sir. I've got a sexy one here. Um, one sent in by not only Mr. Smith of Exeter, but also Mr. Wilkinson, who both saw this and no doubt accepted this invitation in the Express and Echo. Look at this one. Come and sin with Mrs. Daniels at the piano. <laughs> Most odd. Which uh, brings us, quite naturally enough, to Dick Vogue. Yes, uh, Peter Madge of uh, Sydenham sent us the actual postcard, which was in his new agent's uh, in his news agent's window for two glorious weeks. Yes, it seems that somebody was trying to find a nice home for six baby rabbis, white, three weeks old. Oh, uh, they're so cute at that age, aren't they? <laughs> Jenny. This is from Mrs. Latham of Blinaven. And she saw an advertisement for staff in a shop which is obviously still full of flood water. Opportunities for sales assistance with boots. <laughs> Enough to turn Timothy White, isn't it? Eric Idle. Mr. Abbott of 176 Warwick Way, Pimlico, sent us these fascinating instructions. To open, slide the legs apart like a fan. <laughs> as, uh, as a change from getting letters from you, uh, we're going to send one now. Dick Vosburgh and Bill Solly wrote the letter. And uh, it's a fan letter to all the lovely DJs. And here to sing it, the delectable Joy Marshall. All you disc jockeys, I'm dropping you a line. You're always asking for requests. So here is mine. Number one record in Europe is, of course, Hey Jude, sung by the Beatles. Should they be live on the Stuart Henry show? It's Hey Jude, sung by who else? 
but Hamish MacDonald and the tartan washing machine. Soak it to me. Now we come to the DJ of the year, Mr. Monotony. What's I want? Wear a seal. Won't you please put down that spiel? Don't say you don't kin John Peel and just play the record. This next number is a North Vietnamese lullaby which has been recorded by the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders on the NATO label. It's terribly interesting. There ought to be more records like this because it goes on and on and on. It's like me. It's terribly sincere but ultimately very boring. Another guy who ought to rest his tongue. It's almost every housewife's choice. Millions love you, Jimmy Young. But who would ever love you like you love your own voice? And this is your old mate, Jim, saying these are the days as we hop over to Mary Hopkins and says those were the days. And now it's time to pick up the gym-type phone, but first it's recipe time. Yes, we're all joining the JY Batter Pudding Club. Impossible Kenny Everett, there at the BBC. All your jokes are solid corn. Everyone is old and warm. Right, first, just time for a quick jingle. Just rattling me bell. I said bells, madam. Eee, granny! Eee, granny! I don't think you're funny, Kenny. That's my granny, you know. I've just bought her two pounds of wire wool. She wants to knit a kettle. <laughs> who's wonderful, who's marvellous, Kenny Everett? <laughs> don't you think you should do a request now, sir? Thank you, Chris. That's Chris, my butler. Actually, I've had a lot of people write in saying that you'd like to hear the old goon show records. Well, I wouldn't like you to hear them, because then you'd know where I get all my voices, wouldn't you? <laughs> Don't you guys think you're a hog? All you do is make me stop. I'd even rather listen to Enoch Powell. So just play. You can play. Thank you. Thank you, Joy and the dinner jackets. The sound of Vosper. Yes. 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 Dick Vosper, he with a chin like a split in a horsehair sofa. Now, uh, lots of people have been um, asking us if they could see again uh, the original sound of Vosper. So here it is. Here is Dick to tell us about his favorite silent screen director. Thank you, Frank. Marvin C. Hammerschlag, ladies and gentlemen, the Hollywood pioneer who is best remembered for Romany Spitfire, without doubt the finest film version of Carmen. Now, as I've said before in this series, one of the great advantages in working in silent films was that the director could give his instructions to his actors while the cameras were rolling. So here are the final scenes from Romany Spitfire, plus an actual recording of Marvin C. Hammerschlag's voice as he directed the play. Uh, okay, sweeties, uh, this is the big love scene now. You know, bullfighters going off to fight the bull. Give it all you got. Action. Now, I kiss her hand, Rodney. Keep kissing it. You know, pretend you like girls. Uh, Glenda, remember, he's your guy, and you've been nuts about him since you first laid hands on him. Now, start to go still looking at him. You look at her, Rodney. Think normal. Now, wait. Cut to the bull ring. Okay, make your entrance, Rodney. And all you relatives of the producer, a lot of cheers. Act rugged, Rodney. We gotta kill those rumors. Cue the bull. Okay, bull, pull your hoof out. Chase those creeps. They're only extras. Hey, bull, don't chase him. He's the producer's son. Look busy, bull. Now, Bernie, Jaime, and Max, you're scared. Pretend Rodney's chasing you. Okay, Rodney, you pretend that the bull is that hairdresser that walked out on you. Okay, in-laws, cheer for the bum. Cue Glenda to start down the stairs and cut to the other set. Not too fast, Glenda. Remember, you wouldn't like. <laughs> Dry your nail polish. Play with your necklace. In behind you now, Jose, real surreptitiously. Uh, Glenda, I know he's been eating garlic, but try not to notice him yet. Okay, notice him with a yick. Act real chilly. Uh, Glenda, baby, try to forget about the garlic. Now, Jose, forget that you used to be married to Glenda, your lover. Tell her what a crook her boyfriend the bullfighter is, how he bribed the bull to take a dive today. Glenda, let's have the big speech and do it all your divorces. <laughs> the rest of it, the whole mental cruelty bit. Show horror, Jose. Think of all the alimony your pan just brought. Now grab her. 
Keep thinking of the alimony, Jose. You're about to blow your top. This gypsy's been two-timing you. She's probably got a bedroom with a revolving door. Okay, pull out the knife. Now stab her. A big gas blender. Imagine there ain't no more beer in the world. Stagger. Make it good. This is the end of the picture. You try to get up. Yeah, but you can't do it. Okay, assume your usual position. Cut. Beautiful. <laughs> Autumn, season of mists and mellow fruitfulness and amateur dramatic society. The Stock Exchange Dramatic Society, the London Transport Operatic Society, they're all hard at it rehearsing. We felt how nice it would be if we could ask the latter lot, the bus drivers and conductors, to come along and give us, well, not perhaps a whole opera, but say a short concert. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is the London Transport Operatic Society presenting Gems from Guildford and Surbiton. <laughs> out from Hackney Wick, it is now a three shilling fare. To miss the rush hour if you're wise, cause the traffic's very thick, from St. Paul's to Leicester Square. For a number twelve to town, setting off from Camberwell, is a lovely road to shop. Every bus will set you down, all you do is press the bell, press it, press it, and the bus will stop. One lady bus conductor sleeping about like a gym instructor, half to the serve and half to duck the cooing in a voice so small. One more and pass, that's all. Us in a spectral eye and wise to all the fiddles, the dodges, tricks, and the dinners, the nipping aboard on the sly. A bus in a spectral at me, a transport knack or copper. And if you tell a whopper, I'll lend you a four penny wahan, a four penny wahan, a four penny wahan. One. Now cost a passenger ten pence. Well, the least you can pay is five pence to two. Hey. Next year it could be fifteen pence. You took it, I lost up my fifty-five Broadway, or you can telephone and be one, two, three, four. Always on the transport is waiting. gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for listening to our concert, for listening to our show this week, and indeed for listening to our series. We uh, all disperse now through our various ways. Um, I should be going back to work. Uh, the others will be getting on with the uh, business of entertaining people. And we here very much hope to see you all again next year. Yes? 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 yes. 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 Good night. Yes. Bounty do, 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 bounty do
Joey Marshall is now appearing at the Blue Angel Mayfair. The target was a fade out. Well, that's it. No and if they're all bathing naked in that nuptial pool, yes. I can bring Boo Boo on to strip. All right, if you want. Right, right. Then. come on, Boo. It's your week this week. What are you, Bonnie or Clyde? What have you done with you? <laughs> I don't know, Eric. Everything's gone wrong. Everyone's got the wrong clothes on. It's the same underneath, though, aren't you? Oh, well, that's all right, then. I'm the same underneath as well. Yes, I've heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you go and have your quick nuptial with Matt. Yes. And I'll have a quick shower with Arthur here. Go on. <laughs> 